welcome to episode one of a new season of Flat Out, Jack. Excited to be back. A new flat season is literally underway. We've got the Craven coming up next week. But before we get into that, we're just going to say, basically, we've got a few changes to Flat Out this year, haven't we? As you can see, we're now doing this in person, um, not over Zoom anymore. Um, Tom Bull is no longer with us, of course. He will be joining us throughout the season, though, for the big days to preview those sorts of things. You excited to have the flat back, Jack? Oh, I can't wait to get going, Joey, to be honest. We've had that little lull in between after the Lincoln. Maybe we'll get to that a bit later on. Yeah. But really from the Craven onwards, we're, we're really in flat territory now and I can't wait to get going. Exactly. And has anything particularly caught your eye over the first few weeks of the season? Yeah, there's a few talking points, I think. Um, with bands, uh, there's going to be plenty of them in the season ahead. But um, I think that might be a good place to start. The Oshin Murphy ban, I thought, was quite harsh especially when you consider the, the David Egan ban um, mm. for striking them in the wrong place. I think that, that, now that is one ban that I can fully get behind. It, it really winds me up um, when they don't catch them in the right place. It's not hard really to get right. And I think that that's a punishment we should hopefully see more of. I think it's very much justified. It's certainly something we probably see more on the flat than over jumps, isn't it? Just based on the size of the riders. I mean, it's something that you particularly got frustrated with Andrea at Zini for over the years, just for hitting the horse, just not on the hind quarters, that, basically that's it. On, the, on the rib cage. Mm. So, yeah. And it's something Long you'd really case. like us all to, uh, well, you'd like the stewards essentially to be a lot tougher on, because it's, yes. it's really important, isn't it? Especially yeah. in this age of animal, animal yes. welfare, you know, we want to be getting better. And credit to, to Doncaster, they've always mm. been probably the leaders in, in cracking down on stuff like that. So it'd be great mm. if we, we see more of that across the country. And, and in Ireland, to be fair. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's one thing. Anything else? Yes. Uh, so we, we had we had the Lincoln. Mm. We've had a great racing out in Maidan as well. Sadly, Musselbra was off, but at Maidan, uh, the, there was one horse that w was really impressive, and that, yeah. that was Tower of London. Um, to be fair, going into the race, I, I thought maybe he had a bit to prove. I, I didn't know if he was up to that class, mm. and he answered those doubts in no uncertain terms, didn't he? He certainly did. I mean, the last 400 metres, he... He basically dipped under 22 seconds, mm. which is incredible. I mean, for a stayer. And so basically, with that in mind, do you think this is a horse we're going to be seeing over shorter trips this year? Well, I think the immediate reaction by everyone was that, God, this, this is a Girl Cup horse. The way yeah. he's, he's absolutely thundered home, mm. he, he's going to go up and trip. Probably shouldn't be a problem, but interesting. Ryan Moore, no, we're going to go back and trip. They've got plenty of... Ammo, mm -hmm. August Rodan, continuous, and that's a that's a real confidence vote for Kiprios, mm -hmm. who obviously wasn't at his best, best last year. Took time to get going, and and pretty much at the end of the year, it was back to his best. Just just beaten in the in the long distance cup, but that that tells me that they're really confident of a of a, a proper campaign. They've almost put all their staying chips on him. Well, he nearly died, didn't he? So, I mean, yeah. pretty brutal stuff. You know, they really nearly lost him. So he couldn't be forgiven, can't he, for having, mm. a, having a slightly below par season. Particularly that first run, so yeah. Coming back and actually showing some real life at the end of the season there was a real, real plus for them, definitely with Kiprios. Mm. So that's another thing. Mm -hmm. And one more thing we wanted to mention, I think, was, I mean, this is probably something, as many people have said, comes up every year, that we just like... An adjustment, as Carl Burke has done this, has said this year, an adjustment to the flat kind of calendar, so that we don't have such a break in between the Lincoln and then the Craven, because you just would love that start, that start to the season, wouldn't you, where you get such a big handicap, good punting day like the Lincoln is, then followed by the exciting horses coming along at the Craven meeting. Yeah, like we've just kind of alluded, you have this little lull, mm. Grand National in between. There's just no need really to have it broken up. Of course, you'd need to rejig a little bit. Mm. Musselbra was off, but that's a turf meeting that probably would have been on. They're going to have to be reorganised. But yeah. it just makes sense now that get the Grand National out of the way. That mm -hmm. should be the start of the flat I just think it makes sense on so many levels. And Carl Burke made a really good case for that. And it's, it's quite uncommon probably for a bit of common sense to be, to be made. And, and I think that would be a real sensible change. And I think it would be healthy for, for the flat calendar. Yeah, you just have to rejig a few things. Easter mm. stuff moves around. Cheltenham and the Grand National yeah. do kind of shift about, don't they? You wouldn't want the Lincoln clashing with the Grand, Na the Grand National. So you do have a yes. couple of logistical problems to get around, God. but it doesn't seem, you know, Too outside the wit of man to actually be able to sort this out and make sure that we start in a more even way. Kicking on for this season, Exciting. I mean, we've got we've obviously got a superstar in City of Troy. We do, yeah. Back that's 
looming over all these mm. classic markets. Um, it's going to be really interesting to see how he gets off, mm -hmm. uh, how, well, the, in basically the start he gets off to. And, you know, he, he would be such an exciting horse for everyone to follow this year throughout the year. And with that in mind, what horses should we be following this year? We're going to pick out three, haven't we? We're going to go have a quick gallop through them. We are, yeah. Um, just to touch on City of Troy there, I mm -hmm. think he's probably a horse that, I mean, it was so impressive, wasn't it? Yes. I've really warmed to him through the winter more mm -hmm. and more. And I, I was speaking to you, off, obviously, off camera in mm -hmm. the, the weeks leading up to this, that I just can't have him beaten in, in the Guineas now, to be honest. And mm -hmm. um, the way he won at Newmarket the last time we saw him, I, I thought, Jesus, there, there's your Derby winner as well. Yes. Um, you've got a question. Well, I know you would rather go the ledger route. I, personally, I wouldn't even con no, it's consider not that I, it. No, it's not that I'd rather go the ledger route. No, sorry, yes, I, you, I you think the they Maggie will is. go that way. Yes. Well, I know I did. I, I've, now I've heard Aidan O'Brien talking okay. about it. It seems like they want to do something special with this horse. Now, I thought that was going to be the Triple Crown because it's definitely something the Magnus wants. It's a legacy as They well, want to it? do yeah. it, don't they? Yeah. Now, with this horse, with the way that their operations set up, with how Justify is making such, um, shall we say, waves mm. now, I think they're gonna, they, they clearly want to go the dirt route. Yeah. And so I think when they, if he wins the Derby on top of the Guineas, they'll be very much looking for that special kind of achievement mm. rather than what I was thinking they would do, which is try and be the first yeah. English Triple Crown winner for a long time. It'd be so. interesting if, if the, you, the viewers, what would you do if you yeah. if you trained or owned the horse? How how, how would you go mm. about campaigning them this year? Be Definitely. Interested. Please you, leave your comments. Highly below. likely going to be going to America. So highly likely. So is he going to take him the ledger on the way? Would you would you run him in the ledger? And would he stay? I mean, which of those three races, Jack? Quickly, do you think he's most vulnerable? He would be the most vulnerable. Oh, in? ledger. Yeah, hundred percent. Derby, but the Derby or or the Guineas. Which one would he be most vulnerable in? Just because it's the first run of the season, I think hasn't. All the justifies so far this year been beaten the first time out. Could be wrong, but I, I think that might be right so, so far. That's a big. Clip. That's it. That's, that's a, a big, big negative. Yeah. yeah. So it's also a, a very big one for me to chuck at me and try and get me to verify. I yes. Like, no. I, I, have I, to I check, I check my notes. Recall seeing it in the last week or so, which mm. is an obvious, obvious negative. Definitely. But I just think he, he. Well, I'm hoping and thinking he is a superstar. So, but yeah, Guineas. I think Derby is is going to be the, the race for him this year where everyone's just going to be timing-wise right. Mm -hmm. Fantastic. Right. And well, with that in mind, yeah. you were the superstar last year, weren't you? On flat out, 50-point profit recorded. So we're definitely going to be taking very, very detailed notes on your horses to follow. So where are we going to start with the horse to follow this year, Jack? Well, we're going to stick with Aidan O'Brien. Yeah. And I can hear a collective sigh of, oh, it's not going to be that obvious. But mm -hmm. We, we have already had the first casualty of the year. Yeah. Shawari, I've had the ticket, keeping me warm all year. 25 to 1 for the Guineas. Um, yeah, That's anti post punting for yeah, you, isn't it? Not great. I, re I really did like her. I thought um, her form with Fallen Angel, yeah. Alang Alang. She, she was 25 to 1. Uh, 20, 2016's still a great price, and unfortunately, a disaster for Ollie Sankster as well. Fledging trainer. What a story that would have been if, if, if yeah. she could have won. So I need a replacement, mm -hmm. and the one horse I, well, essentially, from from the Breeders' Cup is yes. where I thought this 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 is my one thousand guineas filly as well. You, fair enough, you can have more than one dot of a race anyway. I think that's wide open to be fair. Yeah. Interesting, obviously, Opera Singer now she she's highly unlikely. Mm -hmm. I think they've the, the, said she's had a setback. She's unlikely to go, and the market was strong for a Lang Lang. She's now in the favourite. Mm -hmm. Fallen Angel, obviously strong. Dan Sequence, who we're about to see this week. Um, solid claims with her, hard to pick holes. But I, I really do like content for yep. Faden O'Brien. Now, if you look at it, all his Guineas winners, mm -hmm. a lot of them, I've got them all written down here. I'll quickly zoom through them. Mother Earth, eight starts at two, mm -hmm. one one. Seven starts at two for Love, mm -hmm. one three. Hermosa, seven starts at two, one two. Winter, three starts at two, one a maiden. Mm -hmm. Mind in five races at two, you think, mine was great. Fair enough, she won two group, one, two group ones, but she only won three of her five starts at two as well. And the other two, Homecoming Queen, 11 races at two, she won two. And finally, Virginia Waters, four races at two, and she won one. Now, that doesn't tell you that his, his 1,000 guinea was absolute superstars at two. No. Now, if you look at this filly, mm -hmm. Content, patchy record, Bit slow to get going, very disappointed at Ascot. She was too keen 
um, just took took a bit of time to come to her own. Um, she, as, as you'll see here, she won in good style, mm -hmm. um, going on to the Breeders' Cup at the end. And I mean, this was just a, a fantastic run. Eye catcher of all eye catchers, mm. right? Mm. You know, some effort. Staying this. on like a, another 50, 100 yards, she's yeah. in front. Um, got, got straight on odds checker, gobbling yeah. up all the prizes I could for, for, for the 1,000 guineas. Because look, she, she's Sorry, the obvious way. one. The problem is, annoyingly, just a couple of weeks ago, price-wise is kind of, as a bandit, come in and clipped her in from 25s into a general 16 to 1 now. I think there's still a bit of juice in that price. It's not that price. Could it easily still go off half that. With all that in mind as well. Yeah, in the general record of those seven winners, they've yeah. pretty much all gone straight there as well. I think five of the seven I mentioned there all went straight there without yeah. a run. That is the plan for this filly as well. We're not going to see her. I don't mind that at all. No. Nope. I mean, Aiden is the master anyway. You can get them ready. Um, very hard to pick holes. I could easily see her going off 7, 8 to 1 on the day. Possibly Oshin Murphy, that's another partnership that we're going to get to see more of this year. Mm -hmm. Aidan and, and Oshin linking up. Wouldn't be a surprise if that, that's his kind of first link up. Possibly one in the 2000 as well on the Saturday. Absolutely. Yeah. Great shout. Probably I gone like on it. longer than I needed to there, but it was sort it's, of my 1000 guineas tip as well. It's a very good case. Yeah. Very good case. I like it. I like it for sure. Now mine, unfortunately, has basically, you know, some of the gloss been taken off it since I've been going on about her all winter, have, but yes. sadly enough. Mm. Uh, we couldn't get this out in time, so no. now I'm going to look like an after -simer. But there we go. <laughs> Purple Lily is my filly that I have been really in love with all winter. Mm. I thought she's going to be a superstar. I think Paddy Toomey's going to have a fantastic, fantastic mm. year. He's a fabulous trainer. His, oh. All his stats have been suggesting that he's just on the up and up. He knows exactly how good his horses are and he places them fantastically. And I think he knows he's got a good one here. Interesting point on the side. I mean, this is what I noticed. A, a Lilac Roller won the other day as well. Very impressive filly. She did. Now, her form ties in with another one of my horses to follow. Now, she is an interesting horse in the same way as Purple Lily. They're both out of more stamina-laden mares from stamina families, but mm. by very fast stallions. And this Purple Lily is exactly the same, by Calyx. Uh -huh. Interesting blend. It's not, tradi not, not the traditional way that people, you know, when you talk to people about breeding, they'll tend to like want to breed like with like. And these two fillies are both kind of breaking that mould a touch, you know, going with real, real pacey, kind of bringing a lot of pace into rather more stamina-laden families. I just thought it'd be an interesting point to see where maybe Paddy's seeing a little bit of value maybe mm -hmm. in the horses he's buying in that, in that manner. Anyway, she made her debut at Galway in a race that Dermot Weldtile gets every year with a pretty decent Aga Khan horse. Did the same this year. In the past, the likes of Lego Tissimo's won that race. You know, mm -hmm. really, it's a really nice race. Tarnawa, um, the filly last year. What's her, what was her name? Tahira. Tahira. Tahira, yeah, yeah. yeah. See, all these, all I was going to say Tano again, again, you've just said it. Tahira, yeah, yeah. It was Tahira who made her debut in that, in that race. And so it's, it's often won by a nice one. And she went round at the back and uh -huh. quickened up, showed a really nice turn of foot to go and nab the leader on the line. I thought it was a really impressive performance on debut. Really nice to win like that. She's since gone to Nace and beaten the boys, which I thought was seriously impressive. You always, you know, mm. it's something you always pick out, isn't it? Early mm -hmm. season, start of the year for these young horses. You can always mark horses. that up, I think. You mark it up when they beat the boys. And so she's a really exciting filly. It'd be, it'd be interesting to see where Paddy goes next. Where would you go with her? Would you go for well, the Well, I was just about to ask you that. I personally would go to the Irish Guineas myself. I, 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 I agree, be, yeah. I think it'd be the shrewder choice. It makes sense. Yeah, it does. I, think, I, mean, she hand, I mean, we've seen that she handles the mm. soft ground, so I don't think, as much as I think she'll appreciate nice ground, um, the fact that she handles it, I think it often it's obviously it's often a weaker race, and I think it might be the way to go with this one, mm. personally, you know. But we'll see. She's a nice horse. Really like her. I really mm. like her turn of foot. I like it. She's really, really eye-catching the way that she kind of find, makes everything look so easy and puts a race to bed quickly. Right, next one, kicking on. So, going to go a bit more of a dark horse here. Yep. Only one start, a maiden. Mm. Um, but this horse really caught my eye straight in the track after watching mm. it at the back end there. Um, there's not too much to go on. We'll see him here at Newmarket. Um, look, simp simple debut. Green's grass, learning mm. on the job, staying on nicely. Lovely pedigree for, for Ed Walker. And I, I just expect this horse to come on leaps and bounds this year. Um, I must admit, I have spoke to George. George Baker does a bit for Racing TV. He's been in. He's given me a positive report on him, which mm -hmm. is what you want to hear. Certainly. Um, Gorgeous George. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, no, but very promising uh, early reports. They've given lots of big entries, and that's Al Macan. Yeah, very much. waiting for a while now. Yeah, I, I, I The actually, suspense was building. <laughs> I felt it building. 
I, in my head, I'd already said the name, but yes, Al Makam. Um, uh, a little tidbit for you here, Al Makam. Shake out Ahmed's horses. All have names with seven letters. Jesus, did you just notice that yourself? No, no. So that was from my days when I worked at Haggis. Oh yes, indeed. yeah, plenty. All of them, seven letters the in their years. name. The Some of them years. with two words: Red June. Right. I think for Michael Jarvis back in the day, but um, does he have an affection for the number seven? Is that I have no idea to be okay, honest. Right, well, but um, yeah, you can ask him next time. Yeah, next possibly. Time yeah, I've never met the guy, but <laughs> right, on we go. Yeah, Sheikh Ahmed <laughs> Al Makam is my second horse to follow this year. I think he could be really exciting. Lovely stuff. I guess it's mine next. Back it is. To me. Yeah, back to me. Al Riffa. You like Al Riffa too, don't you? I did. He disappointed me last year. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I wouldn't give him up on, on him just yet. That run behind the art winner, it very was, impressive, wasn't it, in hindsight? It was, yeah. In hindsight, I mean, definitely, you know, Rouget probably would have led away, led off the art winner just a little bit. Yeah, he wouldn't be, a, but, it's still but it was still a very impressive very performance. You know? And then he let the one get away from him, the Curra. Mm. He's clearly had some problems. We all know he's, he, yeah. he didn't have a good year. And in the same way in your, your beer, mm. I'm, I'm willing to let him go. He just, everything last year, Kevin Blake said this recently, you know, he just got problems at the wrong time and it just completely destabilized mm. his season but he's a very very classy horse as an older horse i think coming back this year wooten bassett is just flying we're going to be seeing more and more of that wooten bassett galileo I'm cross sure. it's just going to be the future and i think he's just he just has that real bit of class now now what i, mo I like most is that he's obviously still a colt and in that race in france he made a real dart through quite a tight gap showed mm. a really good turn of pace he, he showed a real appetite for racing which as these horses get a bit older you never really know do you i mean mm. adiar was one i thought last year that just clearly had just lost the love of racing yes. completely and just stopped wanting to do it and when they're colts there's not a lot you can do about it bar the cruelest cut of all and that's not you know, something you're going to be doing with no. such an impressive horse no. like adiar or Al Riffa. So I liked his attitude. I thought he kept mm. some of that attitude for his three-year-old year. And I just think he has a hell of a lot of talent, this horse. So we could be seeing him back in the, making a mark in those big races this year. <music> on to the next one. Third. So the third one. Third and final. If we'd done this a month ago, yeah. I didn't even know this horse existed. Which we did do, but you know, that's, that's, we not, did. that's another flat yes. out loss to, lost uh, to the world. We did one. a pilot. But this time, hopefully, we're off the mark. Yeah. Now, just because I hadn't heard of the horse yeah. a month ago, it doesn't, it's not just a sort of chucking that one out there. Yeah. I was, there. There is a bit of sentimentality to this one, and that's... Um, not the sent this isn't that you've decided to go with the sentimental one. We, we, we have, yes, because I was just really impressed with the, the performance. And um, so I will name the filly straight off the yes. bat is <laughs> Rain, Rainbow's Edge, trained by John Fady Gosden. Yeah. Uh, she won her debut at Newcastle. Mm -hmm. What do enable Stradivarius without parole and Rainbow's Edge have in common? Sadly, you've already given me the answer. Did they all win at Newcastle the first time up? They did, yes. There we go. Now, there's, there's not much credence to that. Uh, they obviously just found that race for her. I, I, I have high, high doubts that she's going to be nowhere close to that. But I do think she's going to be progressive filly this yes. year. Um, she's won over a mile first time out. I wouldn't say it was all, all that impressive for the first sort of three quarters of the race, would you? But by, by the line, very much on top, hands and heels stuff, wasn't given a hard race. I think it was a lovely introduction. Mm -hmm. Go check it out, viewers. Yeah. Let, us, let us know what you think. I thought she was under the pump soon enough. Yes, but the, if you would look at the pedigree and you think, Night of Thunder out of memory, God, the, the furthest she'll stay maybe is a mile. Yeah. But if you look at her siblings, call to mind, he mm -hmm. was a Galileo. Two mile horse. Yes. Uh, there's there's plenty of stamina if if you look close enough there. And but I think she is by night of thunder. She is yes, but he does get the odd two or three that can go over a mile and a half. Global yeah. storm, I think, off the top of my head. I hope he he is a night of thunder. I think he is. Don't worry, we'll check it later. He's a two mile. If not, it's and it won't cut. make the cut. <laughs> but if we, if this is staying in, he's a night he's of thunder. Correct. So yes, uh, rain, rainbow's edge. But the thing I really like about her. Yeah. And as I say, it's a bit sentimental. During my time at William Haggis's, we had a horse called Recorder, who was probably the most talented horse we had in my three, yeah. three years there. He, he raced three times as a two-year-old, and mm -hmm. he, was, he was by far, by a mile, our best two-year-old. He ended up winning the Acom on his third and final start, but he injured a tendon in that race. Yeah. Uh, sadly, we never saw him again. He's now standing at Studded in France. Um, but I'm, I'm certain 
he would have put up a huge performance in the Guinness. It was won yeah. by Galileo, Galileo Gould. Not, not a great Guinness, let, let's be honest. But No. I honestly think this horse was a, a, a real tool. He, he really was. And it's just a shame we never got him back. He was so, so talented. Some of the best work I ever saw there. He, he was just such a, a given horse, a Galileo. Mm. Um, we don't have too much time left with him either, do we? But um, well, well, he doesn't have any time. No, left no, at but all you know yet. what I mean. Of his progeny, of course. God rest him. Yeah. Um, but no, Rainbow's Edge, really, really promising debut. I thought there's lots more to come for her. She's going to step up and trip mile and a half, maybe as her trip this season. She lots to like. Shaped like a solid mile and a half horse, didn't mm. she? She did. Yeah. Like it was all her best work was in the final mm. furlong. Um, she looked slow. She did, did look slow. I don't being, mind being out of memory, that was a concern to me. Mm. But there's definitely something there. There I is. Mean, we don't know what to make of the race, but obviously, mm. we never do. She's but. also the absolute double of recorder as well. So. Well, there you go. Yeah, yeah, there yeah. you go. So that, that is a good vote for her, for sure. So mm -hmm. interesting. Go, go check it out. It was, that's a nice shout from Jack in the sense that it's one that maybe a good few viewers would have missed. Yeah, that, I think that's another one. It yeah. might have just flown under the radar. Obviously, everyone's gearing up for... Exactly. Your Cheltenham and Aintree, that might have just flown under the radar. Exactly. And we don't like to give you obvious shouts for our horses no, to follow, do we? we don't. Well, not, too, anyone could, not too obvious. Anyone could give you a city of Troy, Henry Longfellow, etc. So. Certainly could. Henry, Henry Longfellow is going a little bit under the radar, isn't he? He is, yeah. Could be, could be a right superstar that kind of, obviously, we, we, we are very excited to see him, but be, with being in the shadow of City of Troy at the moment. He's just going to absolutely dominate over a mile and ten footlongs this year, is he not? He's going to, I, I going to go to all the races that Paddington went to last year. Yeah. He? Minden is arguably Aidan's best ever horse, let's be honest. Yeah. I, I absolutely adored her. Mm -hmm. So naturally, I, I love him as well. Done absolutely nothing wrong. Nope. Versatile with the ground. He, he's obviously got plenty of speed, so yeah. it's obvious that City of Troy is going to go up and trip. Island is, Island's he in can, the stream. Horse I really like, by mm. the way. Another Wooden Bassett. Very, very nice horse. He's thumped him twice. And then he's gone to France yep. and impressed. No, I think that's it. So Frank the form high in the sky. So very, very, very exciting horse. It's a very it's good not... point. He probably has gone a little bit under the radar just yeah. sheerly because of... This monster. Yes. That's, that's possibly he is a monster as well, I think. He certainly is. It'll be really interesting if they ever clashed. I don't think I will ever see that, unfortunately. Never. No. We won't. We won't. Just something that, you know, it's usually jumps fans that have to, you know, get excited about clash. Yeah. It never happens. There's not going to so. be a court or Denman with... Uh, uh, Troy so. and Henry, is it? No, I don't think so, sadly. Right, last one. Red Viburnum. Very nice horse, Red Viburnum. She is, yeah. Another one. That mm -hmm. was, I mean, my God, was she dropped into the deep end quite quickly. Yeah, though, yeah, yeah. She? Not very Dermot Well style no. to drop her in. Which is probably uh, a tell in itself, really, isn't it? Exactly. I mean, going off, going off fab to be opera singer. Mm. I mean, Jesus. And then I like a, li a lilac roller in that race as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it was clearly very, very, very strong form. Mm hmm. And she makes some real pace, real, real ground from off the pace very quickly. Got a real turn of foot. I like her. Frankel. She's not the biggest. That's my concern. That is my yeah. concern. Is she going to train on? You'd hope so. You'd hope so. It is a concern. She's, uh, it's a concern. It's it the concerning me. But I've watched her races back a couple of times, and I just, I just think she's shown some real promise. Mm. It's just, it's just nagging at me. That well, she... Morge wasn't the biggest. No. Nope. And didn't, wasn't any hindrance to her really no. last year, was it? So. And as, as Gosman will always tell you about guineas and last two odd races and all those mm. cliches, but yeah, you know, yeah. she only needs to go in once on one of the big days for this to be a successful yeah, horse to follow. Yeah, so, yeah. yeah, no, she's a really nice, she's a really nice horse. I just, you know, she was five lengths fifth in the Moy Glare. I thought she, would, she got into all sorts of trouble there. She clearly was green. She hasn't properly learned to race yet. Mm -hmm. And such a big ask of second start. So I just, I, I, I thought the first run of her career without ever having had a run before, she ran with such credit mm. um, and showed some real talent that she's one that I just will keep an eye on. And I think she may okay. well have gone under the radar a touch. So yeah, she just sneaks into my three. We got to kick on, haven't we? We, we got do. got the Craven coming up. The we do. The Craven meeting. It's upon us. The good stuff is here. Are you here. excited? I am. It's it, looking at the cards. It's not. Oh God, there's not a, there's, a, there's a superstar in, in here the next no. few days. There's not. But it very often but goes like that, though, doesn't it? This? It does. Personally, I I'm a little slow out the the stalls. Mm. Doesn't for me really get going until the Chester. 
sort of dante meeting yeah and i always do find it tough in in april so keep my powder dry a little bit smaller stakes yeah you've got the horses obviously coming coming from their winter campaigns fit from the the all weather yeah you get trainers hannon palmer that have the horses revved first time up yeah um obviously owners like to have their horses ammo can get them up for first time winners you you've got to obviously take that into account and i just like to to ease my way into it i'm very happy to take it easy sort of through mm -hmm. april not saying that there's a i obviously have a few fancies coming up this week but yeah i i always just like to sort of just take it easy in the, these early parts of the, the season right let's have a quick gallop through some of those fancies then yes let's do it first one first one is obelix in the tuesday 255 i like this horse too i do like this horse come around to him a bit yeah not my main fancy in the race but i he's a he's a, he's a bit of a classy back form there isn't it yeah so, there is yeah. yeah second at newmarket yeah he's on the wrong side and just get finds too much um to draw in killy beggs warrior at the line he then goes to york good race fifth of 14 and then the back end is two starts soft ground i think you can just kind of put a line through that obelix here he's 16 to 1 i think that's a, a solid solid enough price we know that july and sort of rolling mild mm -hmm. form crosses over nicely yeah. um and it, it would just wouldn't be a surprise to me to see him going really well here i thought no. he'd be single figure price um ground as i say it's, it's near enough you were saying earlier it's near enough good to firm yeah few is. showers about i think we're going off the proviso that they won't let too much firm get in the ground but no. we'll certainly be on the quicker side of the good there's about five mil yeah across you know across the website it's about five mil forecast tomorrow mm -hmm. so that should just come and just probably just tie the ground over to good for yeah. tuesday which would be ideal really i yeah. think for this time of year that will be right up his street yeah 16 to one i think solid solid enough each way to kick us off for the year brilliant New market dries out, doesn't it? It does, yeah. Whoa. Yeah. Dries out super, super quick. My only thought in the race, I agree, I like I echo all of those thoughts. I do like theory of everything. Mm -hmm. I think first time up for David Amaro. He won first time up last year. I mean he's out yep. of persuasive. Well, I mean what a wonderful family. We're both yeah, mass yeah. fans of Choose Me. We, we are, you know, yeah, yeah. Choose Me was a lovely horse, so I looked after her for a little while. Wonderful, wonderful horse. Mm. I mean, what a what a dynasty Golden she Golden goose she was. Oh my god. Some yeah. some mare. Absolutely <laughs> sweet natured thing as well. And oh, persuasive as well. Um, obviously a superstar in her mm. own right. Um, won on Champions Day, it was wonderful group one she won. He might want a bit softer ground. Okay. I'm slightly concerned about that, but with a bit of a shower tomorrow that might help. I, I just want to see him strengthen up a bit, because he looks like mm. to me looks like a miler. Yeah, they're running the Gosling's running him over ten at the end of the year, he wasn't quite staying. There's a suggestion you might maybe drop him down to seven furlongs. I think he probably is just going one of those horses that's hopefully going to strengthen up a bit as he gets older. Mm -hmm. Those choose me's aren't often the biggest. And as we know with Frankles, they, they don't often, they often throw to the mare, don't they? So you've mm. got this, you know, you've got this Frankel that's just grey. Yeah, you know, he's not often the most dominant in that. They don't tend to yeah. always look like him. Um, but hopefully he's going to strengthen this year and he might turn into a you know a mile i think he can definitely win one of these types of handicaps mm. off a mark of 92. Mm -hmm. so yeah he's one I'm, I'm interested in i don't think the price is coming in and saying back me at mm. 12 to 1 but he's one that i i think i'll probably be interested in on the day if he's around about 16 to 1. next one on we clip we're on to wednesday not too much no. left to go on tuesday and we're going to get out well. This, will, this was going to be one of the horses I was most looking forward to this year. Yeah. Horse, another horse to follow. Just so happens he's running this week, which is brilliant. Therefore, my nap of the week, the one horse I'm going to really have a go at. Yeah. And that is Align the Stars for Charlie Johnston. Again, that's why we pay you the big buck, <laughs> fishing these ones out. Yes. Now, I, I really like this horse. I, I think he, he's very well handicapped off 79. Um, I'm going to say he only went for 100,000 guineas at the sales. Yeah. Obviously, that's a lot of money. But if you look at his pedigree, uh, Al Arsi in there, the, the reason he went for, for so little... There's that haggis thread in there somewhere. There is a little bit, but you look at that, that's a, a real top-class pedigree. Yeah. He, he should have gone for more. I think the reason he didn't is he's such a big horse. Yeah. Now, maybe there's a bit of risk attached. Obviously, will he stand up to training? He'll, you'll certainly find out if you're getting trained by Charlie Johnson because they, <laughs> they don't give you many days off uh, up in Yorkshire there, do they? Um, he stood up to training. He ran three times last year. I think there was promise on, on each start, to be fair. We'll I'd go, say so. We'll go, certainly at Goodwood, uh, he tried to make the run that day. 
and then a Chelmsford last time out. Just that's a good race as well. I, I, I quite rate this form. Mm. End of year form. Uh, we're going to see him. He, he just really given no chance to even win the race. We see him here in the yellow silks. Just given too much to do. Finishing really strongly. Um, Richard Kingscote is jocked up again. He rode him there that day at Chelmsford. Um, he's already provisionally on. Mark of 79. Like, it's, fu it's funny, like, uh, Charlie has just took over the, the, the license, as we know, in the last mm. couple of years. But he's very much been involved probably for near enough 10 years. He's kind of been in charge mm. since then. And they, all, they always seem to have one horse that kind of can run up a sequence. Yeah. P stepping up and trip, as Align the Stars will do this mm -hmm. year. I'd be fair close that this horse might be the one that can run up a sequence. So like, I think he could be a hundred plus horse. Wow! And at seventy nine, I, I really do He's think. Got a few races in yeah, there. yeah, I, I really do hope mm. so. Stepping up and trip, see the stars. I mean, coming into his own as a three year old, getting stronger, filling into his frame. There's lots to like about him, especially in what he's shown, shown so far. I mean, it's really hard to pick holes in him. Certainly is. Yeah. Anything else for the week? Yes, on Thursday, last race. Yeah. Andre Farb's always got to be. You got to always got to take note of, of when he comes over the the pond. He's, you know. He certainly his, do. His record speaks for itself. I just thought the form form of this Suviana was interesting. Yeah. There's a bit of back form in there. Um, I think the trip could be could be the most important thing. Um, stepped up to Deauville on its last start, uh, winning. That was his first try at the trip. He had run over a mile earlier in the season, but mm -hmm. quite often you, you get these horses that are just specialists at the trip. And I think Seven Furlong could be just what he was looking for all last year. Classy bits of form. What was most taken about it, I'm so surprised they've let him in off 94 here. I think mm. he, he, again, he could be a 100 plus horse. Um, coming over, well handicapped, often sort of under estimated in the market mm -hmm. i think yeah obviously we're, we're, we're recording sunday even here we've got no decks or odds for this race unfortunately but I, i'd be quite interested to see what he might go off mm. um he could well go off favorite could be yeah. double figures but yeah i think as we always say keep an eye on our twitter accounts before yes of course well i'll update you know. on there generally I'll, as with the line the stars because i'm sure that as with every horse you, we put up yes there are prices you will not be backing that horse at Yes, I'd be fair sure Align the Stars will be a double figure price, or he'd be a strong each way player. Fantastic. So, Suviana, I think he, he could be possibly, she, sorry, could be possibly around the, the sort of margin of winner each way. So, just, just keep an eye and play off what you think is best. Certainly will. Yep. Is that everything for the week? Yes, yeah, so. It is quite a thin week, isn't it? It is when. Just just another horse in that race, Suviana, yep. security code. Oh, hasn't been security code. Hasn't been so, seen very much of, but it is a horse that... I think the probably one of the longest standing horses in our trackers. Yes. I'd say. Is in your was tracker it, as well. Yeah, was, yeah, it, yeah. was it Yarmouth? I think he made his way in. Was it Yarmouth? Yes, he was second to assessment at Yarmouth, but yeah. it was his debut on the all-weather. He blew yes. my socks off that day. Yes. Um, he's come back, I think, Chelmsford since. Mm. Very disappointing. R race 2-3. He's now in the care of Richard Hannon. Mm-hmm. Very much a watch and brief here. You can't, you couldn't back him. We've stolen money here, yeah. but he's got all the talent in the world. Hopefully, yeah, uh, it still could be anything. Just one to keep an eye. Eighty-eight is probably a mark. It's a little bit harsh, but yeah, territory. Be interesting. Territory's quite, yeah. quite, quite an underrated little stallion. Yes, yeah. In a way. I mean, I remember him. I, I mean, I looked after him at Newsels Park. Not person. I mean, I met basically. You know, I mucked him out a few times. Right. So they look after him is probably a little bit. Okay. Push, it's pushing my luck a bit, you know, I'd say. Yeah. Definitely pushing my luck. Lovely horse, though. So okay. Like him. Yeah, Maybe. no, just keep an eye on him. It wouldn't be a surprise if he just popped up at a big price. And you think certainly wouldn't. But he's clearly had, had the world. On. Clear the world of problems. Mm. And Very fragile. Just a couple for me in the, in the two big races of the week, essentially. And the first one being True Cyan in the Nell Gwyn. Yes. Really nice filly. Mm. She won the Maiden just after the Cambridgeshire, was it, I believe? I believe it was, it was that card, yes. Yeah. Very impressive. She came up the near side rail, but she's got she hits the ground quite hard, and it was good to firm ground that day. I'm not sure that would have been right up her street, um, but she's a big, tall, striding filly, big grey, the dark, the dark angel on the damn side of a pedigree coming through. Trained by Roger Varian, she'll be making an appearance. She'll be around about ten to one, I would say, mm. in the Nell Gwyn. She's a horse I thought she really caught my eye. As with all, it's it's just not a betting week, is it really? It's Not never really, a betting no, no. week. We, it's more of a learn, a watch and learn kind of week, isn't it? Mm. But 
she would be one I wouldn't be letting go without just having a few quid on personally if she's mm -hmm. in that double double figure price because I think she's just she's just a really really nice horse and she was just eye catching in the way that she flew she kind of changed her legs and, and quickened there I thought she was really really impressive by no nay never um, and I, I do I do quite like no nay never as a stallion for just putting in a little bit of class into these horses so yep yeah, she's a she's one I want to keep an eye on mm. and the other one would be sons and lovers in the um, in the craven because I think. I think there's a few horses in there at the moment in the market, obviously again with before Dex, that won't run. And he's there, jocked up, ready to go, made a lot of ground from off the pace to win first time last year for Jane Chapel Hyam. And I, I think that to do that in the Roly Mile, it marks mm. you out as having a little bit about you when you can come from the back and win like he did. Mm. Really impressive, he looks quick, turn of foot. Um, and I think he's one that, it wouldn't surprise me. He's around twenty-five to one or so at the moment. I'm seeing. And mm. It's the sort of it's sort of horse that could. I I reckon he could be there, in the frame, hitting the frame, finishing mm -hmm. fast, and probably rattling up those horses at the top. They do have Group One form, but I just think he's the kind of horse that could really run well in a race like that. And you go, Jesus, how's that gone off that price? And then goes on and has a decent year. Well, that's what I was just about to say. Very underrated trainer. Yeah. And that, that would contribute to that price. like Exactly, exactly. She's brilliant, it, it, yeah. It's just you've got the Gosden ones in there. I mean, and we were just saying, weren't we, how short, how is short is the thing? fab? I mean, Jesus Incredible. Christ. Yeah. Is, I mean, right, that five to four mark are we looking at? I mean, yeah, I mean, Jesus Christ. They must, it must have been pulling up some serious trees all through the be. winter. But yeah, you've got him just down there at the bottom with Luke Morris. Mm. I mean, you know, ideally, um, Luke's, Luke's grand would yeah, be my yeah. first choice, but Luke's, Luke's grand. You're ready to go. He'll probably run well. So I quite like him. Okay. I think each way. Have a little... Race that could cut up. Yeah. Take the three places now. Definitely. I would say so. Yeah. Uh, it's one of those where literally I wouldn't be, wouldn't be staking more than a point or two on this week's racing. Just yeah, cut yeah. up just in little bits just to make sure that... Ease ourselves into the season. We like to ease ourselves in, don't mm. we? I think that's about all we've got time for this week, Jack. Yeah, solid start. It's been a very solid start. Have you enjoyed it? Yeah, yeah very much so. I'm really looking forward it's to it. It's been great to be back. Um, we're really looking forward to another summer full of Flat Out. Please do like and subscribe and comment. Interact. Let's get your questions in. Let's get the conversation going. Yeah, and then horses us, to follow. Exactly. And tell us what, more of what you want down there. More what, what sort of discussion you want. Do you want us to focus more on big handicaps? Let's pull them apart. Yep. Or do you want us to focus on more news-related topics, please do give your feedback in the yep. comments, but do like and subscribe to Racing TV if you like this content, because, well, basically, it justifies us giving you more and more of it. Anything else to add? No, I think you've, you've hit the nail on the head there. As you see, we're, we're already trying a few changes. Yeah. Anything you want to see, we'll, we'll try and endeavour to put it in, really. Mm. Yeah. If you want more of George Baker, we can get more of him. More, yeah, that, yeah, more we'll of give, Anthony Dunkley, give any of these ring. people. Yeah, yeah, we we'll can get in touch with his agent. Exactly. <laughs> You'll see if, see if he's got time for us. And more of Tom Ball, of course, who, as I say, will be joining us from the big festivals. All that's left to do is me to say, please do gamble responsibly always. It's supposed to be fun. Keep it fun. And we'll have a very, very enjoyable flat season. Thank you for joining. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you again very soon.